Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have the Dell Latitude 7390, and we're going to take a look at how to service and maintain or and upgrade some of the main components, so the power jack, uh, the Wi-Fi, uh, SSD and RAM, and battery. So our first job is to turn the laptop over, and we have these eight screws on the back to remove. Uh, these are all exposed as this is a sort of business orientated machine uh, so it's very easy to service this system uh, very easy to replace most of the main components and yeah just generally a pretty easy machine to work with with just a Phillips uh, double O and O screwdriver bit so in this case I'm using a Phillips O bit uh, and just a small plastic pry tool I will include links in the description to all the components that I'm using through Amazon affiliate links. Uh, and if you find this video helpful, do give me a like and a subscribe if you want to see more videos in future. And if you've used this to upgrade or repair your device, um, then do please consider giving a super thanks as this helps uh, towards the cost of running all this channel. So with these screws undone, and just making sure we've done the middle one as well, we're now just going to, we could use the pry tool, but actually often isn't necessary, but we're just going to push the pry tool in at the back. You can just do this with fingers, just get fingernails under the back here. And we want to lift and lever it forward so it opens like so. With that done, our first job is to release the battery, uh, so to disconnect that. So what we're going to do is take hold of the connector, uh, the little pull tab on top of the connector here and just disconnect that. That then isolates the electric uh, isolates the battery from the system so everything is electrically off. So in terms of upgradable parts in here we have on this side the uh, WAN device uh, so for the SIM card. Now this does require uh, the SIM slot to be on the main board so while this is replaceable um, it has to be there in the first place for the SIM. So if you don't have that on your board, you can't add this in. Uh, we also have our M2 wireless card here. Um, and then we have a single DIM slot and also a single M2 slot as well. So in terms of upgrading the memory, uh, this is very simple. So what we want to do is just take a finger on each side and we have these release clasps by pushing those out gently we will see the memory pops up and then we can slide it out. This particular machine already has 8 gigabytes of RAM and that's what we're going to leave it. We could upgrade this up to 16 gigabytes if we wanted to um, but for now I'm going to leave it with the 8 gigabytes. So what we want to do is make sure so this is DDR4 2400 memory and we want to take this we want to make sure the keying pin is aligned here press it in and press down so that it clicks into place like so. So very easy upgrade to make here. Next on the right hand side here we have our SSD. Now obviously if replacing the SSD you want to make sure you're either cloning uh, the contents of the drive onto your new SSD uh, and I do have other videos explaining how to do that or you want to do a clean install of Windows and again also have videos explaining how to do that on my channel. In terms of actually replacing the drive though so we have a single screw here, again just using the Phillips as PH0 size screwdriver bit and by undoing that we can then lift and gently ease out the SSD. Uh, this particular SSD is a SATA drive, however I have tested with a PCI Express uh, NVMe type drive and that works just fine, um, so this slot can take either type. For now though, again, we're just going to slot this back in as we're happy with the drive it currently has. And then screw that back down into place. Our Wi-Fi card here is a Wi-Fi 5 type. Uh, so this is a Intel uh, 
8265 NGW. We could remove this uh, either if there's an issue, if we need to replace it, or to upgrade to a Wi-Fi 6 or 7 type card such as the AX200 or BE200. Um, just make sure that you're upgrading because this is uh, a PCIe type card, not a CNVI type card. So when doing that upgrade, uh, buy one of the 200s, not the 210s. So having undone that screw and removed the little cover here, we then have two cables. We just need to gently, so take the lead and then just pop these off and then we can lift the card up and slide it out. To refit, we then do the reverse. So pull the cables out the way, push into place, press down and we can see so white cable is labelled here as main on the card popping that down into place and then black cable here just gets it aligned press down with your fingertip and that will go in we then realign the shield get our screw and trying not to obscure this for the camera too much screw it back down into place. Whilst we're in here one good bit of maintenance to do is just to uh, address the fan so check that the thermal paste doesn't need replacing and also to check that the fan needs clean if whether the fan needs cleaning. Removing this is straightforward for the heatsink so we have four screws and these are not retained, so we need to take those off as we do it, so make sure you don't lose them. All four are the same. And then we also have two screws for the fan, so I'm going to remove, because these are taped, I'm going to remove the fan and heatsink together. So remove these two diagonally opposed screws. And then we're just going to, using fingernails, and again, sorry if this obscures the view a bit, but pop out the fan connector here. Let's get a small pry tool just to make that a bit easier. So we want to just pop that out of the socket very close into the fan itself which does make it a bit trickier but with that done we should then be able to lift up the heatsink and remove that and the fan together and in doing so that unplugs the fan. So if we want to separate off the fan from here we can then peel back this sealing tape So with our heat sink and fan removed and the tape taken off the other side, we can then remove the fan itself. I've gone with a Phillips double O size bit here just to make it a little easier with these smaller screws. So removing those two screws, place them to one side. We can then flip over the heat sink and fan and we have two small clips at the back here so what we want to do is just ease those out with the pry tool and then we should be able to lift the fan free. So from here if we need to replace this fan module we can replace that and screw on the new one and we can also clean out the fin here uh, if we have a build up of dust which is affecting cooling. In this case it's all very clean, um, so we're just going to slot the fan in, it goes a little bit under this heat pipe, and then clip it back into place, and then refit the two screws.
For repasting then, we want to just use, I'm just going to use this contact cleaner spray just to help. So spray this onto the old paste and then just use this to remove the old paste. We can see this is quite dried on and quite thick and refreshing this should just help temperatures a little bit. Since we've got everything apart already, we might as well do the job. So with that cleaned off there and also off of my mat, we then have a clean heatsink. And then turning our attention to the machine itself, we can do the same with the processor. So again, just this is non-conductive. So just spraying a little bit of this on to soften the old paste. And then wiping it off. With that sufficiently cleaned, we can then apply a little bit of thermal paste. So just small amounts onto both the PCH and the CPU dies. And then taking our heat sink. So what I'm going to do first is just position that, press it down, then lift, check. Yep, so we've got good coverage on the dies there. Place it back down. And what we want to do is make sure we get our fan clipped in because there is nothing more annoying than completing your reassembly and realizing you haven't plugged in the fan. And then place that back down. For refitting the screws, uh, we can see there are actually numbers here. So we want to do them diagonally. So one, two, three, four for the heatsink. And with this, we've repasted and cleaned out our fan if required. Also, don't forget, of course, to refit the fan screws as well, as you don't want that moving around in the chassis. If you have a damaged DC jack, then this is actually very easy to replace. Uh, so this is in the top corner here, and there is a single screw which we can undo. This then can be lifted up for the cover and slid out. And this gives us access to the DC jack. From here we can lift this and then push the cable out of its socket and just so with that removed then we could take our replacement part and simply slot back into place press down back into its little slot here and then fastening this side of the clip over into place and then screwing back down to replace the DC jack this laptop can be USB-C charged as well if you have a damaged power jack. So replacing the battery is a case of two screws, one on each side. The third one here is actually attached through the base of the laptop, so is already removed when you've removed the base panel. And of course, we already have the battery unplugged. With that done, 
we can then simply lift the battery up and out. To then refit it is just the reverse of this. So line the battery up, slot it into place and then refit these two screws. and then reconnect it. And now we are ready to refit the base panel. So to refit, we are going to push this in at the front. And then simply screw in with the eight retained screws. We also are going to remember to refit our SIM cover when we've finished. But I hope you found this video useful. If you have, uh, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more repair guides and reviews of laptops and other systems. Um, consider leaving us a super thanks if you found this helpful in repairing your system and would like to uh, help towards the channel's running costs. And all in all, thank you for watching. Have a great day.